This is Hannibal here, the death dealer from The Hannibal TV, and I have a special interview tonight. There's a big event coming up this Saturday night, September 30th, in Napanee, Ontario. Great North Wrestling returns to the Napanee Community Center, and of course, myself, Hannibal, am in one of the main matches against WWE legend Gangrel, but I have on the line with me two-time Canadian champion and multiple-time Quebec champion Jeremy Prophet, and he has a very tough task in front of him. He's going to be fighting a man that is on a victory streak right now in Great North Wrestling. He's returned to Great North Wrestling after a nine-year hiatus, three-time WWE Tag Team Champion, former WCW Hardcore Champion, former ECW wrestler, Quebecer, pierre Carl Ouellette, a.k.a. Jean-Pierre Lafitte. And Jeremy, how have you been preparing for this match? Because uh, this has got to be one of the biggest matches of your career. It definitely is one of the biggest matches. Um, and it's a match that's been a long time coming because, quite frankly, uh, I don't know why it's taken this long for pierre Carl Ouellette to finally step in the ring with me. Uh, I've been doing this now for 12, almost 13 years. And yeah, he's been on a bit of a hiatus, but you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't have faced. So I'm glad that finally, you know, the money came together and the promotion is on point, and they can finally put us in the same ring and see what materializes. As for my training and how I'm taking uh, how I'm taking this fight, uh, I'm taking it very seriously. You know, he's a very talented competitor. He he's well versed in a lot of different uh, aspects of combat, as he loves to show off to the world, uh, you know, via Facebook and social media and whatnot. Uh, I'm not as braggadocious as that, but uh, nonetheless, you know, his accomplishments are definitely there. Uh, I do think that the key point in what you mentioned is this long hiatus and him coming back. You take that much time off, you're not going to be at the top of your game, whereas I'm in the ring just about every week, you know, all over Quebec or in Ontario. I'm getting in the ring I'm facing the very best this country has to offer on a weekly basis. So it, it, it's a little bit insulting that so many people feel that I'm an underdog going into this when my opponent is not taking the same steps to uh, stay in peak in-ring condition. You know, ring rust is a very real thing, and I think that that's going to catch up to him very quickly once he sees that he's in the ring with a thoroughbred athlete like myself. And you're probably the most accomplished martial artist that he will have been in the ring with um, since his return. He hasn't really uh, faced anyone with your uh, background in kickboxing and grappling and so forth. He has demonstrated uh, some submissions. He actually claims that he is uh, the only submission machine in Great North Wrestling. Something like that is his new tagline. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's very simple. I think he's giving up his game plan is what he's doing. You know, if submissions is what he wants to do, that's fine. I'll make him work. I'll keep him on his feet, and he's not going to take me to the ground. As big as he is, you know, he, he's not going to be able to contend with my speed and with my cardiovascular conditioning. You know, I think I'm much better conditioned than he is simply by the fact that I've been doing this on a weekly basis. I'm uninjured. I'm at 100%. It's not like the last time I stepped in the ring, I wasn't at 100%. I thought I was, but I wasn't. When I was in there with Max Testosterone, and he managed to, to get a fluke of a victory that I will easily avenge once the time comes. But now I'm looking forward. I'm 100%. I've got a great gas tank. And he's going to realize that I hit a lot harder than he probably realizes. You know, a lot of guys, yourself included, much bigger than me, have been in there with Jeremy Prophet, and they've found out that I hit extremely hard for a person of my size. And so that's something that's going to set in. The reality will set in with Pierre Carl Ouellette. Probably about a minute into the match, he's going to realize the first time I hit him and make contact that he may be underestimating me. Actually, speaking of hitting hard, someone actually challenged me to uh, chop them the other night, a non-wrestler. <laughs> and I did, and they ended up throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> just just from one? Yeah, it was just one chop. But, yeah, that'll uh, do it. They let me wind up and... Uh, get a good hit in. The person may have been a little intoxicated, but uh, he learns his lesson. Now, maximum testosterone, of course, the injury you suffered going into that match, 
was at the hands of uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. in a match he had against him in Montreal, and um, that was a fairly serious injury. Now, you're not going to be having a one-on-one -on -one match with Maximum Testosterone, but November 5th at 1 p.m. at the Great North Wrestling event in uh, Rockland, you're going to be involved in this big 30-man battle royal for the brand new Great North Wrestling World Television title. And uh, both Quebecer Pierre and Maximum Testosterone are going to be in that battle royal. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, if history has shown anything in Great North Wrestling, it should show that I should be the odds-on favorite going into that. Uh, I think the last time there was a battle royal, I was one of the final participants. If I'm not mistaken, I may have been third to last eliminated. And that was a bit of an off night. I had a match uh, later on, so that was kind of on my mind. The battle royal was just, you know, gravy on top of that, number one contendership. I had other things to worry about. Uh, I had won many battle royals before in this company and in others. And so going into this one, I don't see how it's going to be any different. Uh, battle royals are very straightforward. You know, you got to just not be thrown over the top rope. A guy like Max Testosterone, like Pierre Carl Ouellette, these are heavy set guys. The tendency is for people to gang up and go after them. It's not really the tendency to go after someone like me, despite the fact that I am a two time Canadian champion in Great North Wrestling and have many other accolades to add to my resume. However, like I said, my strategy is to avoid that and to make sure that I'm the one throwing people out and not the one going out. You know, I might be a little sneaky when it comes to battle royals, but hey, you got to do what you got to do to win. And it's not uncommon, and this is a uh, full-on shooting with you. This has happened before in Great North Wrestling. Uh, wrestler opponents that are scheduled to wrestle you have backed out because uh, they're genuinely fearful of you for one reason or another. And we're not going to mention this person's name, but you are scheduled to also have a match um, in Rockland prior to that Battle Royal. Um, and this match was at the request of uh, the Channel Z television show, but your opponent is trying to uh, back out of facing you, citing that he doesn't feel comfortable wrestling you. What, what are your thoughts on uh, some of the wrestler wannabe types that uh, try and back out of matches rather than... Uh, try and gain the experience of wrestling someone as accomplished as you are? Because you have had matches for WWE. Um, you've wrestled in the U.S. Uh, you've wrestled all over Canada. You're known all over Canada. So I, I always find this a little baffling if you want to be a wrestler, but you don't want to wrestle the top stars. Now, you know, you can answer this. You've known me a very long time. We've been in the ring together. Uh, we've been on the road together. Have I ever backed down from a match with anybody? Have, have I ever, in, in you know, your time uh, putting on shows, ever heard of Jeremy Prophet saying, I refuse to face this person, ever? No. no. And that's exactly how I am. I don't care who the opponent is. I may have more matches with you than just about anybody, uh, definitely than anybody from Quebec here. And I have never once felt like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not up to it. I'm not, No. I like the challenge. I like being able to step in there with someone that is going to push me to the next level. You know, how do you expect to go anywhere in the wrestling business if you meet adversity and you don't take it on head on? I just I don't understand that mentality. You want to understand the way I think? The way I think is simple. Bring the biggest challenge to me. Whether that challenge be uh, an opponent that could hurt me or inflict some kind of bodily harm, whether that challenge be, oh, it's someone with a, with a bad reputation, whether that be someone who, I don't know, is maybe, uh, you know, someone with a lot of influence, and if things uh, don't go their way, they'll use that to, to hold me down from going places in the rest of it. I really don't care. I love a challenge, and I love proving people wrong, and when it comes down to it, I love a good fight. So if someone is too scared to step in the ring with me, well, you know, power to you. You might as well just step out of the whole business altogether and do us all a favor. Now, speaking of uh, good fights, I actually had a, a very tough match against Scorpio at uh, the Great North Wrestling event at uh, Bike Fest, which is available online. It has over 50,000 hits, and the, the full event video is uh, also on there. Unfortunately, you were still recovering um, from your injury, but you're healed up now, as you said. But Scorpio is also going to be in Napanee taking on an old friend of yours, the uh, six foot six Nathan Banner. Um, what's your prediction for that match? It's a pretty hard one to call. Um, you know, I can't say a bad thing about Nathan Banner. He's been my running buddy in the company now for 
quite a while. So I know he's a very talented individual. He's got the size. He's got the power. Very athletic for a man of his size, too. For those of you who haven't seen Nathan Banner and you listen to this interview, uh, I encourage you to check out his stuff because he is uh, quite a talent. Um, you know, Scorpio, what more can be said about him that hasn't been said already? He's ridiculously athletic. He, he has defied aging uh, for the fact that he is as old as he is and can still move the way he does. Uh, Scorpio was always one of my favorites growing up. He's, you know, you look at my work and you'll see so much that resembles the stuff that Scorpio does. And I've had the chance to be in the ring with him, and he's a, he's a tough SOB. You know, when he's hitting you with those forearms, with those kicks, you know, you, you're, you're going to Concussion City when you're taking those. So him against Banner, it's a tough one to call, but just like with me and Pierre Carl Ouellette, i got to go with youth. You know, you cannot fight the hands of time forever. And while Scorpio, he's still active, still wrestling all over the globe, and that's great on him. Nathan Banner, he's younger, he's bigger, and he's got a mean streak to him too. So my prediction is my man Nathan Banner, hands down. And uh, the final match coming up this Saturday night, September 30th in, in Napanee, that uh, i got to ask you about is going to be Lady Yasmin, the Great North Wrestling Women's Champion of Canada, taking on Ilani Iolana. Now, I find this match very interesting because, for one thing, the winner gets to wrestle Tessa Blanchard at our November 5th event in Rockland, but Yasmin really hasn't... She She's only been wrestling about a year and a half, she has a great track record, but she hasn't wrestled a woman with the mean streak of Alani Ayolana, who has wrestled in Japan. She's a very hard-hitting wrestler. She's training and shoot wrestling and grappling, so she's very legitimately dangerous. And I'm, I'm just wondering your thoughts on this match. Well, really, I don't think very highly of Lady Yasmin. Um, I've seen her in there. I've seen her on a couple of shows. Don't get me wrong. As a human being, you know, I've, I've had a few conversations with her. You know, nothing wrong there. My issue with Lady Yasmin is she's the champion, but when I see her in the ring, I don't see a champion. I see someone that's learning, kind of, you know, learning on the job. And so I have to question her intestinal fortitude as a champion because, like you said, she's not been put in with an opponent that's going to be uh, as, as vicious and as, as, as violent as, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to probably Atlanta, mess up her name. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, there's a lot of, you've got to buy a lot of vowels in that one. But uh, Ilani, this girl, just from the promo I've seen of her, and I have not seen her wrestle, but seeing her talk, I want to see what she can do. She, she was practically saying that she was going to skin her alive, that, that she was going to you know, revert to cannibalism in order to take the championship from Yasmin. So, in seeing that intensity there, that got me interested in wanting to see this match because Yasmin has not faced someone that genuinely wants to inflict that much pain on them. Um, you know, I'm very anxious to see it and to see where that goes. Uh, I almost want to say it reminds me of um, in the Batman uh, Dark Knight movie. I think it was the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises. You have Bane, and there's a scene where Alfred is saying to Batman, as they're watching Bane commit his crime, they're like, look at this man. Look, look in his eyes. Look at the focus. Look at the, the power of belief. When I saw that woman speak, she believes in herself. She believes she is going to walk in there. She's going to decimate Yasmin. She's going to pick the bones and leave her defeated and take that championship. I don't see that same level of intensity or anything I like that out of Lady Yasmin. So I am definitely afraid for her time as champion when the show rolls around in Napanee. And another guy that's going to be making his debut in Napanee is someone you're familiar with. He's recently been featured on uh, GW or GFW's Impact Wrestling show. He's British. His name is Ad Hutchinson, and he's another shooter. Uh, wrestles the Japanese style, where which is the style that we want to uh, main style we want to do here in Great North Wrestling and promotes. We are definitely a hard hitting company. And uh, for those that haven't heard of him, who, who haven't seen him, I know you've been in the ring with him. Um, mm -hmm. What can fans expect from Ad Hutchinson? I think he's a great blue chip talent. And what I can say about him doesn't even focus on his in-ring ability, but it's Ad Hutchinson, the human being. I mean, this is somebody I got to know very well. I'd say his first 10 or so, definitely with his first 10 professional wrestling matches, were against me. 
And I also had the chance to, to room with him, to live with him, to get to know him a little. And he is determined. This is almost like what I was talking about before with the power of belief. He came from England. You know, he doesn't have a, a, a work visa. He had a work visa here, and then it ran out, and he's just here on money that he earned so he can learn professional We're not wrestling. We're off of this. <laughs> well, well, look, it's, 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 it's a true story. He came here. He, 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 tried to, he tried to work, but, I mean, you know, or maybe he saved up his money, and, uh, you know, then it ran out or whatever it may be. Um, but I know that it's a story of he came here. He doesn't have the same advantages as the privileged people of, of Canada do, uh, but he's still chasing his dream here because he wants to make something of himself. You know, I had a conversation with him, and he said to me, I want to be something in wrestling. I don't want to just be enhancement. I don't want to just be uh, a, a loser in this. I want to be successful. You know, and he comes from, he had told me he actually comes from the same uh, community as Neville, who's currently uh, in the WWE, just lost the Cruiserweight Championship and how it's a very rough area. It's a very uh, impoverished uh, part of England. And so he, he comes from a rough background, and he's fighting for everything that he gets. So I have a, a tremendous admiration for him and for anyone like that who is not just taking stuff that's being handed to them, but they're working hard to get it. And I see that same work ethic when he's in the ring. And he's another one. got a bona fide mean streak when he's in there, and rightfully so. I mean, this guy's fighting. He's fighting for his living in there. So... I'm definitely 100% behind him, and you know I'd love to step in the ring with him again, and you know see how he's come along since those first 10 matches or so. And I actually discovered this guy at the uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, they had like a training camp in early July, and I uh, did some sparring with him at that camp, and he very much impressed me. And of course, they have put footage from that camp recently uh, on the Impact Wrestling Worldwide TV show, and I've been getting a lot of fans' questions uh, regarding that. Maximum Testosterone was also at that camp. Uh, Eve the Black Widow was at that camp and actually ended up moving out there. Just just for anyone listening to this that has been asking me questions about that, um, I was only there for two days. I was offered the chance to move there and train for a three-month period and participate in their impact wrestling contract competition but unfortunately I have big roots here in Ottawa I can't just give up everything I have here and all of my ties with Great North Wrestling and all the work I have to do with that as well as my regular jobs and uh, and move there at this point in my career so um, I'll be happy to wrestle for them one day maybe it'll happen sooner than later you never know Feel free to uh, to tweet at them, send them messages if you want to see me um, in that company, especially now that they're going to be uh, coming to Canada more often. But just to answer the fan questions out there, I was only there for two days. Unfortunately, I couldn't commit to anything further than that. But I had a lot of fun while I was out there, um, learned some new techniques, and uh, also... Uh, discovered some new talent that you'll be seeing in Great North Wrestling in the future. And uh, what do you think of all the changes, Jeremy, with Jeff Jarrett recently, uh, I guess being, I don't know if he was released. Communicated? Yeah, basically. Uh, it seems to be uh, forever changing. I really do wish them the best because there needs to be other companies out there, but there seems to be uh, constant changes in that company. It's really hard to assess what's going on there. Um, Anthem is at the helm. They're making the decisions. Uh, Jim Cornette was also there. He also left recently. Uh, you have a revolving door of talent, which is good for you and I. I think eventually that they're going to get the formula, and they'll be able to put together something that will be worth watching and that can function cohesively. Um, but right now, it's, it's, again, another case of learning on the job and uh, – you know, uh, I, I can't really judge what they're doing because I, I I haven't been following their programming. I was actually interested in maybe following it again, uh, considering the fact that, uh, you know, some of you guys are getting some exposure on there. And, uh, you know, seeing where that goes, maybe it might be another good avenue for me. But uh, for now, it looks like they're trying to find themselves. But uh, I wish them all the best because, yeah, this industry needs competition. And, you know, they need to uh, be able to pick up on the fans that WWE continuously is losing week after week. Like, I'm not sure if you saw their attendance for the past couple of weeks there for SmackDown. Half the arena is taped off. Um, there are 
droves and droves of wrestling fans that are no longer supporting the product. I mean, those seats were full, I would say, a year ago. Those seats were full. So people need an alternative. They need an, uh, another outlet, and it's ripe for the picking. If they can just figure things out, I'm pretty sure they'll get them. And for those fans looking for another outlet, of course, you can follow everything on The Hannibal TV. Subscribe um, to this YouTube channel and come out and support our events. Uh, ticketweb.ca, you can find uh, tickets for our event uh, this Saturday night, September 30th in Napanee, as well as our event on November 5th at 1 p.m., in Rockland, Ontario. That will be our last event of 2017. We will not be putting on another event until March of 2018. So it will be your last chance to see Great North Wrestling in 2017. Tessa Blanchard, who was just in the May Young Classic on WWE NXT, will be on that event, and I'll be wrestling Savio Vega, who is, uh, you were talking about you against Carl Ouellette was a long time coming, me and Savio Vega has been a, a long time coming, but right now I'm not looking past um, Gangrel. But more information on uh, all of those events is also at greatnorthwrestling.ca. And uh, before I let Jeremy go, um, another thing that I've brought up in a couple of my interviews lately, but I am very curious to hear Jeremy's opinion on this, as he has trained in MMA, was this alleged uh, sexy star armbar. Because... Uh, I watched this this footage from AAA in Mexico, and everyone was making a big deal about uh, this sexy star armbar on uh, Rosemary, I guess, who is an Impact Wrestling competitor. And first of all, I didn't notice that she was struggling very hard to get out of the armbar, because if you legitimately thought your arm was in pain or was going to break, as I've seen in many grappling tournaments and as I've experienced being in shoot armbars myself... You're in you're in panic to get out of that, and you're literally fighting for your life to release your arm. And at the same time, it didn't look like it was being applied with the intention of breaking an arm or doing any real damage. Um, so I'm just curious on your opinion on that. Uh, I've been rather outspoken about that because I find that people are very quick to jump on a bandwagon, and I have never, in all the time I've been in wrestling, seen people jump on it and, and universally from every level of this business jump on the sexy star hate bandwagon so quick you know I'm, I'm a contrarian thinker to begin with i'm thinking that you know if all these people are hating on this one person uh whether it be a sexy star whether it be someone like enzo amore um whether it be uh you or me you know the, the, there's got to be more to this and I watched the footage just like you did. Uh, I listened to what both sides had to say via social media. Um, Sexy Star gave an interview, a couple of interviews also on the subject. And there are a few things that I noticed with regards to that. Um, as you had mentioned, the armbar was applied. And Sexy Star herself said that, you know, if I applied this on her, um, why was she not more hurt? You know, apparently she was backstage. She was she was getting it iced. Um or maybe she was icing it, but that could typically happen after any kind of a match. The arm was not broken. If she really intended to inflict serious harm with that arm bar, she could have. She could have broken her arm. She could have dislocated it. She could have done a lot of things, um, and she didn't. Uh, I heard, I think it was Ryback in an interview said, I guess she's a very bad shooter if that's the case, and you know, maybe that was the case, but I'm inclined to believe that her, who, if I'm not mistaken, has some sort of MMA training or maybe yeah, boxing I training. She's she had a, a boxing match and has trained in MMA. Well, well I think her husband is a, is a professional boxer, and she's had some professional fights. And so this is someone who knows how to fight and is supposedly mad or whatever, putting on the armbar, and doesn't inflict any kind of great damage, yet she's being treated as though she crucified the girl. Now, I'll say this about Rosemary. I don't know her personally. Um... I've been around shows that she's been on. I may have even been on a show or two with her. Um, I can say that uh, I've, um, I, I've, I've had long-term relationships with two women that have been in this business, and both have spoken very highly of Rosemary. Um, I've not heard anyone say a bad thing about her. So, you know, it's almost like one of these situations where you kind of have to say, is it just that this girl is really unanimously liked by a lot of people 
and they feel bad that she got hurt and you know want to lead a crusade against the person who did it and are kind of maybe i don't want to say oblivious but are maybe less um inclined to look at this from an objective point of view uh i personally don't think that sexy star tried to break her arm or you know if she had she would have succeeded I mean, rosemary gave her her arm and, and she wouldn't have just, just been don't. lying there when it was applied because really you'd be really fighting to get out of that if, if you think your arm's going to be broken well, what, what I saw in the clip was that she put it on, and then at one point she uh, looks like she's letting go of it, and then she puts it back on, which a lot of people have interpreted as, oh, you know, she, she struggled to get out of it, and then she, she reasserted herself with the hold. Uh, I think that was just for show. I don't think that she was, um, you know, really applying any dangerous pressure when she went back for it, but I think maybe Rosemary got caught off guard by that, and the motion kind of just led to what's pretty much an accident. I really think the whole thing is an accident that's gotten blown out of proportion. And I mean, in wrestling, you know this as well as I do, that, you know, we, we want to win when we're in the ring, but, you know, we, we don't want to prevent somebody from being able to, to, to work the next day to make their living, you know? And, and I don't think that Rosemary was injured to the point where she could no longer perform and, and wrestle. In fact, I think she wrestled not too long after. I may be wrong on that. Someone could do a fact check and see. But I, I, I think that uh, she was still able to wrestle shortly after. So, I, you know, maybe, again, I've, I've also looked at this from a lot of different perspectives, but, you know, maybe Rosemary kind of got, uh, got taken hostage in this situation and so many people went to fight for her that at this point it became huge, so huge that, like, if she were to say that it was just a misunderstanding, it would it would disappoint all those people. I don't know. I don't know the girl. I don't know her personality. I just don't think that the punishment that Sexy Star has gotten, being stripped of her title within that company, being virtually blackballed by the wrestling community, I don't think it warrants what happened because at the end of the day, Rosemary wasn't severely injured, and yet Sexy Star is the one who is left almost without a career at this point. I just don't think the punishment suits the crime. No, and yeah, there's there's more to it to, than we know, and I do feel bad for uh, for Sexy Star in the situation because I do believe there's more to it. And you're right; it could be a situation where Sexy Star may be disliked because that's what it sounds like that she was mm -hmm. disliked to begin with, and the other girl was very liked. And yeah, there may have been something going on there, but I really don't think the intention. Uh, was and, and maybe I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but maybe I'm going too far here, but I, I feel it becomes bandwagon jumping at a certain point, and it becomes if anyone speaks out to defend her and maybe offer a contrarian opinion like I'm doing here, suddenly the same people um, who are condemning Sexy Star will throw that same uh, hatred towards whoever would, would go to her defense. And I mean, these are top-level people. You know, Road Dog, who is... Uh, well known to be one of the powers that be within WWE, saying you know we never want her to work here. Uh, well, they wouldn't have hired her anyways because she's 34. So. Yeah, well, I think they, they they tried they tried her out a little while ago, and they they said that they didn't. I heard the story was that they didn't find her as pretty without the mask. So, um, whatever the reason well, she may has be, I just physique. keep her mask yeah. and show off her physique. Yeah, I I, I think that it, it's just it becomes very very mafia like that you have certain powers that be within wrestling saying all these condemning things towards her. So who realistically is going to have the balls to stand up and say, you know, hey, maybe it wasn't what we think it is. You know, maybe I'm going to defend her. No, I don't want all these people to be mad at me. It, it's just, I hate that mentality because, you know, wrestling, it's like the mob. And so... Well, they're, they're, we're already blackballed anyways, it seems, so I don't think we need <laughs> to worry whether more people dislike us or not. <laughs> You know, being blackballed in the industry does not necessarily stop everybody from making money. There's a lot of people that have had a lot of doors closed on them, but they still have a lot of talent and they can still make money. You know, look at look at Teddy Hart, for example. Teddy Hart's still making a living in the wrestling business, despite all the bridges that he's burned, because, you know, he, he's, still, he's talented and he can still make money for someone and make a ton for himself. And Bruno Sammartino was even blackballed at uh, yeah. one point in his career, but uh, his talent ended up shining through. And obviously, he went out on to have a legendary career. Yeah, many examples. Jesse Ventura also sued the WWE. Managed to still make a great living for himself. Yeah. Well, 
I uh, wish you luck against your match against uh, Pierre Carl Ouellette. Um I still have to do my second workout of the day, and I know you're just coming back from the gym, um, so I'll let you eat. Now, is there any uh, anywhere anyone can follow you on Facebook that's listening to this, or uh, Twitter uh, or anything like that? Yeah, they can find me on Facebook. Um, you, know, you can search for me under my real name, for those who know it, uh, under Black Dynamite. I think all of that will lead to me. Um, recently opened up an Instagram at Black Dynamite, and uh, yeah, I haven't really keep, haven't been keeping up to date on the Twitter, but uh, I'm sure you can find me on there too. Facebook's always the best bet, and uh, those who know, they can find me. And for anyone listening to this, of course, subscribe to the Hannibal TV. Twitter is at GNW Wrestling. Instagram GN Wrestling. My personal Twitter is Devin Hannibal. I'm also on Facebook, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. And uh, we put these audio interviews on greatnorthwrestling.podomatic.com if you want to subscribe to the audio versions. Otherwise, they're also posted on our The Hannibal TV Facebook channel, which just got over 42,000 uh, subscribers this week, over 28 million total views, which isn't bad. And we're very happy that it's growing on a weekly basis. And we have huge shoot interviews coming up with uh, not only Gangrel, but Kevin Sullivan, JJ Dillon, and Savio Vega. So if you want to watch those earlier, um, subscribe to our The Hannibal TV Patreon page because we put the full shoot interviews up there with uh, no advertising long before they go full on our regular YouTube channel. But of course, we put the clips on YouTube and eventually down the road the full thing. So I encourage everyone to, uh, to tune in to our shoot interviews. Jeremy Prophet, who's on the line with me, might even be doing uh, a variation of our uh, shoot interviews uh, starting soon as we were talking about off the air so uh, that might start sooner than we think but uh, to close off this interview for tonight Mr. Prophet uh, do you have any final message you would like to say to Mr. PCO Stala <laughs> would that ever get over in the states who knows? Stranger <laughs> things have happened. But, I mean, you know what? If he wants to stick to doing all of that kind of shtick and the la, 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 that, 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 that's fine. He can keep making the videos on Facebook. He can keep telling everyone how he's benching this much, how he's beating up, you know, a bunch of beer-bellied guys in a, in a local gym. It, it, it's fine. The real test will be when he steps in the ring with me and when I drag him into the deep water, when I start beating on him, when I start capitalizing on every mistake that he's going to make because he's been out of this business for so long and the game has changed. I've been constant. I have not had to take any kind of long hiatus. I was out for, you know, maybe about a month or so, a month and a half, but that, that that's the only time I've had out of a ring and I've been in it nonstop taking on the best. So if he wants to continue underestimating me, that's fine. That'll play to my strength. I love when guys underestimate me. He'll stop underestimating me the second I hit him, and he realizes that he's in the ring with a predator. Well, fans, check it out. You don't want to miss this event. If you live in Kingston, Belleville, Brockville areas, it's not a long drive to Napanee. It's very centrally located. Even if you live in Cornwall, it's not too far from Cornwall. So I suggest you all come out to that event, Napanee Community Arena, this Saturday night. Alcohol will be available for those that drink. And uh, greatnorthwrestling.ca has all the information. And Mr. PCO style la 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 will also be doing an autograph session at 3 p.m. at La Pizzeria in Napanee that day if you want to uh, meet him and get a picture with him before uh, Jeremy Prophet messes up his face that night. Yeah, so, well, he's already missing an eye, so, you know, he's not starting off with much. So you know what side to throw your punches on, right? Exactly. exactly. I've been studying him. I, I know all of his weaknesses. I've seen him since I was since I was a little kid. I know what he brings to the table. He doesn't know what I bring to the table, and he doesn't know how far I'm willing to go to get that win. Well, fans, don't miss out. Be there, and uh, if you're living in the States, as a lot of our fans do, it will eventually be posted on The Hannibal TV, but the best way to see it is live. It's our first time in Napanee since 2011, where both Mr. Prophet and I were victorious in our last matches, and we both hope to uh, continue the Napanee winning streak 
this Saturday night at the Napanee Community Arena. Be there. Universal Mechanical presents Great North Wrestling. Saturday, September 30th, the Napanee Community Arena will turn into a wrestling ring full of wrestling legends. See Quebec or Pierre, Gangrel, Flash Funk, Champion Hannibal, and more. They will even have mini wrestlers and a women's championship match. Advanced tickets start at just $10 at ticketweb.ca or at La Pizzeria on Dundas Street. Tickets also available at the door. Great North Wrestling, Saturday, September 30th at the Napanee Community Arena. Visit greatnorthwrestling.ca. Hey.